battlefield conditions of Ukraine have thrust a crucial question into the spotlight. Is American military gear too complex and expensive? As Iranian-made Shahid drones wreak havoc in the region, the cost of shooting them down with American-made missiles raises eyebrows. Ukrainians find themselves resorting to using old German anti-aircraft guns from the 1960s. The lessons learned from this dire conflict suggest that while American gear may be technologically advanced, it's not always the best choice or the most cost-effective on the battlefield. Let's examine some eye-opening examples that warrant our attention. When news broke that Germany and the United States were supplying Ukraine with Leopard 2 and M1 Abrams tanks, the excitement was palpable. Both tanks outshine their Russian counterparts, boasting superior size and firepower. The battle-proven American Abrams, in particular, is deemed nearly indestructible. However, there's a catch. The Abrams tank weighs a staggering 7 tons more than the Leopard, making it susceptible to getting stuck in Ukraine's muddy fields or collapsing fragile bridges. To exacerbate matters, the latest Abrams model runs on jet fuel, a resource hard to come by on the battlefield. But the biggest headache lies in repairs. Picture this, a frontline battalion unable to fix an Abrams with broken optics. Replacing these crucial components involves the arduous task of shipping entire subsystems, potentially hundreds of miles away, while awaiting replacement parts. And let's not forget the price tag, a jaw-dropping $10 million per unit for an Abrams, compared to the more modest $6 million for the latest Leopard 2. Considering all the factors at play, it becomes evident that the German Leopard 2 is the wiser choice for Ukraine. In fact, due to its availability, Leopard 2s have already entered service ahead of the Abrams, courtesy of Poland and Canada. Air superiority has long been a prized asset in warfare, but the conflict in Ukraine challenges this notion. Initially hesitant to supply Ukraine with F-16 fighter planes, the United States and its NATO allies feared escalating the conflict. The F-16, a battle-hardened fourth-generation multi-role fighter, is renowned for its agility, versatility, and advanced avionics systems. While it does not possess stealth technology like fifth-generation fighters such as the F-22 Raptor or F-35 Lightning II, the F-16 remains a formidable aircraft with a wide range of air-to-ground missiles and loitering munitions. However, Sweden threw a curveball by offering Ukraine its Saab JAS-39 Gripen. The Gripen possesses exceptional sensors, electronic jamming equipment, and the remarkable ability to land on small runways and highways. Though unproven in battle, the Gripen has consistently dazzled in air-to-air -air war games. This sparked a fierce lobbying battle, with Ukrainian pilots privately expressing skepticism over the F-16's superiority. Now let's talk cost. The Gripen's flight cost stands at a reasonable $7,800 per hour, compared to the F-16's hefty $12,000 per hour. And let's not forget maintenance. The F-16's upkeep is a costly affair, estimated at a whopping $10 million per year. Yes, the Gripen has a higher production cost, selling for an additional $17 million per plane, but that's because the F-16 has enjoyed a longer production history. Moreover, we must consider the conditions on the ground. Ukrainian runways, constructed Soviet-style, are not ideal for every aircraft. The Gripen's smaller air intakes, positioned higher on the fuselage, handle debris accumulation and challenging runway conditions better than the F-16. Ukraine could resurface some airfields, but that would be an expensive and time-consuming endeavor. The Gripen's shorter landing gear, designed for rough strips, proves advantageous in such situations. The F-16's longer undercarriage isn't as well suited to the stresses of short runways. So, don't be surprised if Ukraine decides to opt for both Gripen's and F-16's. The conflict has taught us that air superiority no longer rests solely in the hands of manned aircraft. Sophisticated surface-to-air missiles have made the airspace treacherous, rendering dogfights nearly obsolete. Instead, jets are primarily employed as short-flight, air-to-ground missile launchers. In fact, friendly fire incidents have become distressingly common, prompting Ukrainians to paint their fighters with blue and yellow national colors for better identification. Transporting combat infantry to and from the battlefield presents its own set of challenges, often necessitating specialized vehicles. 
In Ukraine, the Australian Bushmaster and the American Striker M1126 infantry carrier vehicle stand as two options. Both are similar in size and power. But there's a crucial difference. While the Bushmaster remains by the infantry's side, bravely fighting alongside them, the Striker merely drops off its precious cargo and retreats. The Striker is lightly armored and vulnerable to anything more powerful than a machine gun. It's been described as nothing short of a death trap. In contrast, the Bushmaster proves its mettle by withstanding Russian attacks and showcasing its endurance in the field. And the icing on the cake? It costs a modest $1.57 million per unit, a stark contrast to the striker's hefty price tag of $4.9 million. For cash-strapped Ukraine, seeking effectiveness and affordability, the choice is clear. It's important to note that the mentioned systems are not directly comparable, as they offer different capabilities based on terrain and combat conditions. The estimated unit prices also fail to account for bulk buying discounts or ongoing maintenance costs. Additionally, American equipment often incorporates super technology, which may contribute to its price tag, reflecting extensive research and development expenses. Nevertheless, the conflict in Ukraine serves as a stark warning to U.S. arms suppliers. It underscores the urgency to streamline production, simplify maintenance, and reduce system complexity. Let's not forget the concerns surrounding potential price gouging by some arms suppliers. Ultimately, while a particular platform may be deemed the best, it holds little significance if it's impractical or unaffordable on the battlefield. Non-Western buyers, with more limited budgets, seek simpler and cost-effective alternatives that still offer effectiveness. Washington policymakers must take heed, acknowledging these crucial factors while striking a balance between the interests of arms suppliers and the needs of their constituents. The battlefield serves as a relentless teacher, and its lessons must not go unheeded. It's time for a serious reassessment of the complexity and cost of American military gear to ensure that our forces are equipped with the most effective tools to succeed in the face of adversity. Defense Analysis Weekly is committed to bringing you thought-provoking analysis and insights on the latest developments in defense and international security. We are passionate about providing you with engaging content that goes beyond the headlines, offering a deeper understanding of the complex issues shaping our world. To stay updated and never miss an episode, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. By subscribing, you become part of our community of defense enthusiasts, international affairs aficionados, and curious minds eager to explore the ever-evolving landscape of global security. We value your feedback and ideas, so please leave your comments and suggestions down below. Your input helps us shape future content and ensures that we continue delivering the content you find valuable. Thank you for joining us on this exciting journey of analysis and exploration. Together, let's delve into the intricate world of defense analysis and stay ahead of the curve. Stay tuned for regular uploads, and until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and stay vigilant. Remember, knowledge is power, and Defense Analysis Weekly is here to empower you with insights that matter.